we're going to be doing something a little different today. All the videos we've done up until now on this channel are for people who have modified their computers and are looking for additional things to either add to the computer, to modify it, or to build computers from scratch. This hopefully will be the first in a series of videos for people who have never modified computers before and are a little unclear of where to begin. So in this first video we're going to be looking at motherboards. What are they and what do they contain and how can you use them? What we have in front of us here is a standard mini ITX board. This board is a fairly standard all power board and we're going to step through and look at all the components and parts of the board to build your familiarity with them. The largest and most obvious component on the board is this large heatsink. This metallic heatsink is designed to dissipate heat from the component that sits underneath it. In this case, the component is the processor, the central processing unit, the CPU. All the motherboards you will encounter have a CPU of some sort or other. As you may be able to tell by looking at this motherboard, this heatsink is a passive heatsink. It has no fans built into it and no large cooling tower. This is because the processor is a low power processor. This particular board is no longer functional, which makes it very easy to handle because I don't have to worry about breaking any of the very small components situated on the board. The processor is of course the brain of your computer. It does all your calculations and drives the whole system. If we look above the processor we can see these two slots. These two slots are intended for memory cards. These are little plug-in boards which allow you to extend the memory of the computer. To the side of this is another slot. This slot is intended for expansion cards. Each motherboard is laid out slightly differently. Larger motherboards have more than one of these slots. Motherboards over the years have changed radically. Different manufacturers have different layouts of boards, but there are general standards which are employed by all manufacturers. This particular slot is a PCIe slot. This would allow you to plug in a graphics card if you wished to extend the graphics capabilities of your computer. Many, but not all, computers come with graphics capability inbuilt to the processor or motherboard. This is known as integrated graphics. As you will see from the front of the board, there are a number of sockets into which you can actually plug things. Your integrated graphics can be accessed via these two slots. There are many different types of graphics card interfaces, but this is an HDMI slot and this is a VGA slot. The majority of modern boards you will see have either an HDMI slot or a DisplayPort slot. And to the side of these we have USB slots and an old keyboard and mouse slot. These USB slots will allow you to connect things like keyboards and mice. Additionally you can plug in external hard drives or USB drives. And over here in this stack we have yet more USB sockets and an Ethernet socket. This Ethernet socket allows you to connect to a network. Some motherboards have more than one of these Ethernet sockets. And this stack at the end is the connectors for your sound system. To allow microphone input and output to speakers. So what else can we find on the motherboard? You will find somewhere on your motherboard one of these. This is a battery. While your computer may not be switched on all the time, this battery is used to keep the real-time clock up to date. So that when you switch your computer on, the computer will indeed know what day it is and what the current time is. Because this battery is running a clock on the computer. To the side of this battery is a large 24-pin socket. This socket 
supplies the power to the motherboard. This connects to your power supply unit. There are many different types of power supply and we'll cover these in a later video. Over to the side we have two additional sockets and these are to be used for connecting to disk drives. These are known as SATA connectors. These handle the data to and from external disks. The disks are where you store the computer's information. Some computers have either on the top of the computer or the underside of the computer what's known as an M2 slot. This is an additional slot into which you can plug a solid state drive. This particular board does not have one of these, so if we want to drive this computer we will need to use one of these connectors to connect to a disk drive, either a solid state drive or a traditional spinning disk. As you will see from the board, there are no buttons on the board to switch the power on or off. So on the board you will have a number of these headers. These headers perform different functions. Some are used to connect to a fan to keep the processor cool. Some can connect to additional fans to extract hot air from the computer case. And some of these connectors allow you to plug in and have additional USB slots. And one of these connectors is to connect to your case. This will allow you to have lights on the front of the case to indicate the computer is switched on and also the switch which allows you to power the computer up. One thing that many people are not aware of is that when your computer is plugged into the main socket the computer is actually switched on. It is using very little power and when you press the power switch on the front of the computer which is connected to two of these pins this will initiate a full power up of the computer itself and it will start to draw power and drive the display. So even when the computer appears to be switched off it's still drawing a very minimal amount of power from the power supply in order to be able to detect when you push the button on the front case. As you will see from the layout of the motherboard as well as the larger components like the CPU there are a vast number of very much smaller components. Once upon a time motherboards like this, or the larger ones, were assembled by hand. Because these components are in fact so small, they are manufactured in an automated process, which allows the motherboard to be much smaller in size. However, it also means that should something go wrong with a motherboard, there are limitations to what you can do to actually repair them. So this has been a short introduction to the components on your motherboard. If this video proves popular I may do additional videos on the components which plug into your motherboard to make it a complete computer system. But that's it for today, thank you for watching.